hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Chewing the Brew. This evening I will be enjoying, I will enjoy it, darn it, the uh, Sam Adams Winter Lager. Festive and smooth. I've had a few lagers recently, I think. Um, ale versus lager. Lager is the more historic like the older style of beer. Ale is a more recent development and required some, some development in brewing technology and science. Um, lagers tend to, be, tend to be simpler beers and like, like flavor-wise and, and so forth. Um, and ales are generally more popular in the craft community, though that is changing recently. I believe Sam Adams winter lager, their, their winter beer has always been a lager, so that's kind of interesting now that I'm becoming more aware of the difference. Um, just the, the word lager is standing out to me more, and that's cool. They say no matter what or how you celebrate this spiced holiday lager's rich malt notes, and then it talks about tasty things. So it's meant for everybody, for all time. Um, you know, what's a, what's a winter beer versus a holiday beer? Every artisan of the craft and every enjoyer of the craft will probably have their own uh, ideas as to what is what and which is which and why they are. Um, I generally expect a winter beer and a holiday beer, maybe a holiday beer to be a, a subset of the winter beers, maybe focusing more on spiced flavors, um, you know, traditional holiday spices, your cinnamon, nutmeg, cloves, allspice, um, maybe with, uh, you know, more, more chocolate, or if you're going to do a, an adjunct peppermint, you know, chocolate peppermint kind of, kind of beer or something like that. And focusing on maybe an overall flavor profile that corresponds to a traditional, some other iconic holiday element. So a gingerbread or, um, Christmas trees, <laughs> since we're being iconic holiday things. That, that's what I would think of as a holiday beer versus a winter beer is simply going to be a heavier but not necessarily bigger beer. Um, so your darker styles, your porters, your stouts, um, your ambers, your brown ales, your Belgian doubles and triples and stuff like that, or quads if you're crazy, um, and, and the like bigger beers uh, that are, I mean, historically your body needs more energy to stay warm over the winter and some of that warmth is just in your brain and alcohol does make you feel warm <laughs> by driving the blood to your extremities i think it is so you feel warmer but i don't know um anyways that's my own ideas just kind of random off the top of my head of what might comprise a winter versus a holiday beer this is a winter lager, but it does say it's festive. So, and the ingredient or the, the flavor profile does indicate that they're kind of going more for holiday, iconic holiday flavors. And we'll judge them on that. So let's see here. Oh, pours, pours a like golden honey, like a uh, dark, dark honey. Uh, very clear, very filtered. Um, head is thin. But present, it's there. It comes back. That's a decent amount of head. Some rockiness. I can smell the lager. Um, I found lagers to be perhaps, perhaps a little muddy, not not as in like mud, but muddied in their smell. Um, there's more kind of smooth and gentle and mellow scents in the average lager that I've experienced so far. Um, and yeah, uh, so so maybe some honey, um, uh, like a super rich bread, like a um, challah bread or something like that. Um, maybe cinnamon rolls, raisins. So a lot of kind of soft and baked and sweet flavors to the to the to the scent. It smells pretty good. It, it, it smells, it smells inviting. I like that. Let's uh, see how inviting the taste is. Mm. Okay. 
couple different flavors going on there. Um, uh, the barest touch of a molasses, but then it comes to honey. So more maybe maybe like a, a stronger honey, like a, a buckwheat honey or something like that. Um, have you ever had like actually gone and looked up a honey other than wildflower honey or whatever generic stuff you get at the the grocer? Like had an orange blossom honey or a buckwheat honey. Honey really takes on the flavors of the thing it's created from. And wildflower honey, and as I understand it, uh, legally to be orange blossom honey, like it has to come mostly from hives that are mostly surrounded by orange trees or something like that. And so there's going to, there's going to be some mixing in there. There's always going to be a little bit of dandelion in your honey. <laughs> And, you know, the weeds and other just generic fauna that, or flora, not fauna, <laughs> flora that that grow uncontrolled around wherever it is you're developing the honey. But but the the flavor, the generic, or the, 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 the identifiable flavor compounds of the flora that is the primary surrounding flora of the honey, of the, the, the hives where that honey comes from, is very present in the... In the honey and that random aside has very little to do with this except for the fact that this isn't just like wildflower honey this is a, a stronger darker honey kind of flavor there's also um it's like that hollow was toasted a little bit just just till it's barely getting to be brown not not burnt at all There's almost a, an apple cider, like an unfiltered apple juice kind of quality to that. But it has, like it's a real quick, like the, the mouthful of flavor right there at the outset. And then it's, it's, it's faded to this nice little, there's a little bit of uh, earthy cracker finish. Um, but then it's, it's gone. Um, very, very, like it, it doesn't hang around very long. Um, and that's not in an unpleasant way. It's just, it's there and then it's not there. That's tasty. I like that. That's an enjoyable, pleasant beer. It's not demanding too much. If I were having a casual get together of friends in which I wasn't planning on, you know, expounding the virtues or extolling the virtues of a particular beer, which is none of my parties, <laughs> let's be honest. I mean, of all the parties I hold, I throw, you know, I'm the real party hound. Of all the parties I throw, I'm not. Yeah, I'm going to be talking about beer. Sorry, I'm a bit of a nerd in case you hadn't gotten it. But if I were looking for something that wasn't going to collapse the palates, that wasn't going to offend, um, you know, someone who's new to some of the stronger beers. And I mean, this isn't a strong beer. This is a, a five and a half percent. It's 22 IBU. So maybe someone who isn't as familiar with the, the Belgian triples and stuff like that or or. Um, other more bombastic over-the-top holiday beers uh, this would be a really nice introductory beer for them uh, it has it it's still recognizably very beer like it has a nice lager body that that is a good foundation to build on it's well crafted the flavors are there and it's pleasant and it's enjoyable but it's not like demanding you're gonna pay attention to me because I'm beer it's just beer it's good beer it's beer you want to drink. It's beer you want to enjoy. Maybe not beer you're going to savor. You know, that kind of beer, which is exactly what it wants to be. It's Sam Adams. I mean, the only Sam Adams that you're going to be, you know, sipping in neat little sips to savor over and over again, and this is not a put down on Sam Adams, but, I mean, there's their utopias, and then there's everything else. And the utopia, the, the skill that makes the everything else is what goes into the high craft of their utopias and kind of the over-the-top just crazy quality crazy ideas that come up in that but you know you're, you're getting middle of the road well crafted tasty enjoyable pleasant well-built beers and this is one of those it's exactly what it wants to be and it's that very well i like that that's a good thing this is sam adams winter lager I'm Matthew, I've been chewing the brew. I'll catch y'all on the flip side.